everybody. Welcome to the Horn Hangout, our second Horn Hangout in November and the second of our Ladies Month. I'm really, really proud and really happy to welcome Professor Marie Louisa Neunecker. Welcome, Hello. welcome. Hello. welcome. <laughs> there are a lot of people very excited to hear our hangout all over the world. I mean, it's just been incredible to see where everyone is writing from Singapore, Melbourne, Serbia, yeah. Ireland, um, Berlin. Berlin. <laughs> I hope your students are watching. And they, I suppose they don't know. <laughs> ah, some of them do. I've been on the phone to okay. some of them. That, that's how I do my research. I get on the phone to people I know who know you because because you're not easy to research. There's not so much on the internet about you apart from the official blah blah. Yeah, I'm old generation, you know. <laughs> old generation. Okay, well, forget the old. We ladies don't talk about our age. No. But you sure. did. You did have your 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 career started at a time there was obviously no internet, yes. and um and that hasn't been a very important part of of your of your career of your. No, I think this is the development of the last ten years. What do you think of it? It's exciting. It's it's wonderful. You see. Uh, so many people all over the world. It was. It's. It's a new. It's a revolution in communication. I think it's. It's a big chance, and uh, for me, very new. You know, but younger generation is using it, and I think it's. It's great. My five-year-old godchild. She can use my iPad and my iPhone better than I can. So yeah. it's, it really is the younger generation. Nothing can replace the live. Concert though no, this is uh, still uh, something different because you have the atmosphere and the, it's like 3D, 3D. Yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it's another dimension. But um, for just to get information and to just to get uh, contact with people, it's it's great. That's why we're so happy to have you today because we have this little Horn Hangout community. All of you are out there. I know. I recognize the great thing about the Horn Hangouts is I recognize so many of the names, and uh, and it's a really nice global feeling today, and um, and it's a really good chance to get to know you because you're a bit of an enigma on the on the internet anyway. And people who have heard you in concerts, I've had people write in and say that your CDs were the first. CDs they bought and so thank you very much for coming today and I'm going to start instead of with the usual blah blah about how you started playing the horn we are starting with the, the most typical question on the horn hangouts um, Angelica Toombs has already asked what sort of mouthpiece do you play on oh, I'm prepared, <laughs> <You're> prepared. <laughs> so look this is a three Bach uh, Bach three Bach three Bach or Bach or Bach, Bach. Uh, so it's American mouthpiece. It's um, the rim is a little bit round. So this is also always helpful. Is if you have a very bright sound, it makes it a little bit more smooth. You yeah, can say, yeah, a bit darker maybe. Yeah, yeah. round more round. Yeah. And the the kessel. So the inside yeah, the bore. The inside bore? inside the, the cup. kessel. Yeah. yeah, the cup is more um, uh, like Trichter. It's more, more, more like a, more like a. Oh my God! You need, they, they understand. Yeah, they know. like like this, <laughs> not not like this. So it's not rounded; it's more straight down. Yeah, this is a little bit um, okay. better for security if you uh, tend to to make too much kicks. It helps kicks. sometimes. Kicks is an important <laughs> word for the non-German hangout uh, friends. Kicks is our word in German for a split note, a crack, okay. a splat. Uh, anyway, maybe you can all tell us on the chat what in your country a split note is called. I would, okay. We would like to know that. Um, so, keeks in Germany, split in English, but of course these are not things we like to talk about. Gagel in, in Österreich. Gagel. Gagel. <laughs> it sounds more nice than, than a Gagel, kicks. yeah. And in Spanish it's pifia, I think. Anyway, you guys can okay. start uh, start telling us your words words for uh, splitting notes, but we don't want to start a horn hangout talking about splitting notes. No. Is it unusual that um, you play on an American mouthpiece on an Alexander horn because you are an Alexander horn artist? Ale everybody's watching at Alexander's Musik Alexander. Okay. <laughs> and um, is it unusual that you play an American mouthpiece? Um. Right now they are not so common, but I think it's um, a good mouthpiece. But you know, mouthpiece it's like shoes. You have to find the right size. And sometimes I I complain that the uh, normal sizes of the mouthpiece have too uh, and raster, so they are too far away. You have 70, 75, 80, but our lips are most between 73 and 
78. So it, it should, should be more more smaller uh, okay. steps because the nerves are so so near together. You yeah. you you I can feel and you as well. Um, hundred millimeter or one hundred. Hundred of a millimeter. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's really is. very very sensitive, yeah. and I think. Um, it's always the look of of the right, right, really right size in in a very small. Uh, I'm sorry to give you the mouthpiece question right at the beginning. We've never actually started yeah. a horn hangout with a mouthpiece question, but you know why not? Why yes. now? Um, oh, good. We've got some nice split note crack in crack in Quebec kicks in Serbian too. So thank you. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. My Louisa, why did you decide to play the horn? I think I I was. Already very old, nine, 19. Uh, I played trumpet before because I had three elder brothers playing trumpet, and I was the, like the, the youngest. You were the youngest and, uh, of yeah, three girls. Oh. No, you can't play with us. It's not nothing for girls. And why? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I first heard, uh, heard the the horn in the, in the chamber music. Group. I uh, I played very good piano, and my teacher asked me to turn page in in a concert, and there was a horn player, and I in in the uh, ensemble they played, and I liked very much the the warm sound, much warmer than trumpet, and for me it was too too bright. Yeah. Also today I love more cello or, or viola than than the high strings. Yeah. And I think this everybody has um, the soul is swinging in one. Uh, uh, Direction. Yeah. yeah so sure. um, I, I heard this song and I I, th I thought it it must I must change. Not not my second instrument was trumpet. My first was always piano and then second trumpet and then I decided no I I, I changed to. But home. nineteen is quite late. So you it's late, but Barry Tuckle, Hermann Baumann, they all started sure. very late. So it's never too late. <laughs> <laughs> never too late to start. No, because um, if you have. Uh, the musicality, and if you have, um, it's maybe um, sensual uh, intelligence of the coordination. Coordination. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, it's some. Some are very intelligent here to to find the right coordination. Yeah. And then if you have the idea of of how it could sound and uh, the mu music, then it's very fast to learn. It's important to have your own sound in your head. I mean, you could. I couldn't say what my own sound is, but I. You do, you know what it is when you hear it. Yeah, and this sometimes um, it, you sh as teacher you have to develop. Yeah, everybody has its own sound, but sometimes they they think I ha must have another sound. But um, it's first you have to discover your yeah. own your own. How do you do that with a student? Yeah, um, it's good to make uh, uh, recordings. Of, of yourself, obviously. And in these days, there's yeah. no excuse not With a to quite good, good yeah. sound, and yeah. then, then, and but of course, listening um, other, other people, and just to yeah. decide what, 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 uh, what is my, my vision of sound. So you, um, you started the horn at 19, and you were going on to study Germanistic. What is that in English? German, German, yeah, German, German studies, li literature. literature. Yeah, but but you know, I started to be a teacher, a teacher. In, in school high, music. Yeah, yeah, but not for little children, but higher children. And um, it's because I started so late with the yeah. instrument, and and with piano, you can't do a, a, a career. So I just started this. Um, as a general study, you you get a lot of informations in in music history and all, all the stuff. But I never uh, could imagine me as a teacher in school because <laughs> I think I was not so nice and uh, polite to the oh. teachers. I I know <laughs> I know they um, I would have suffered in yeah. school if they were like me. So you decided to go and study the horn. Yeah, I, I stopped studying uh, to be teacher when I had the, for my job. So oh, okay. So, <laughs> so you studied was, um, so you studied horn and on the side still still teaching these. I studied I studied horn after I got a job in Frankfurt okay. Opera. Okay. So it was ah, uh, the wrong way. <laughs> the other way around. You see, this is the problem with googling you. You don't get all that. You started your job as second horn. Yes, as second horn, and then I decided, as when I got the job, I decided not to finish my study in, mm -hmm. in being teacher. Mm -hmm. and then I, I, because I had already the yeah. job, so yeah. 
something uh, very German to be um, to have a feeling of security. Ah, <laughs> so okay. never we never risk too much. Good. When you started, and actually someone's just uh, just written in, Jonathan Lasman, um, how did you cope with the difficulties facing a young female brass player in the 70s and 80s? Um, everybody always asks, everyone always asks me this question, you know, what's it like being the only girl? You, 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 were, you were really unique, but in your, in your student area, in your student uh, Umgebung, now I want yeah. to speak German with you, it's difficult because we only speak German, so it's quite strange to suddenly speak English to each other. Um, you know, in your in your group of students, there were there were quite a few good girls around. Yeah, the but time. they also got got good good jobs. Yeah. But um, it was rare at the, at this time. But I, when I entered, when I went to to the orchestra, I didn't feel strange because I grew up with three elder brothers. So and I was used to. I know the the inner language how <laughs> how men. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. very useful. Yeah, this is really. I think maybe we should do a hangout about that sometime. Yeah, that's it's very <laughs> special. And um, I I will do next week a symposium uh, hornistin in orchestra, so female horn players in, in orchestra. In and Can uh, I come? Yeah, I, I invited oh, you, but oh, you are busy. <laughs> oh, okay. And uh, I think it's still interesting. Yes. Still interesting, and. Um, because men and women are different in behavior, and uh, it's good to know the the language of each other, so to understand. Better. Did you ever? Did you? You started the second horn, so you weren't actually the boss. But I heard a story about even though you were on second horn, you were still very much the boss because when when you arrived at Frankfurt, the first horn liked to look onto the stage, so he had insisted that you sit the other way around, like in Vienna, mm. right? Yes. Is, that, is that right? Because he wanted to see the stage. The girls, the nice <laughs> dancers. And you didn't like that? No. <laughs> so you changed it? No, I, I asked him uh, very polite, in the, because in the first year it's on, you say, on trial. On trial. And then he said, yeah, I'm there. you can, it's easy for you. And But then I, I got the job fixed, and mm. then I said, no, I don't want to, <laughs> to change back then. Maybe, I was very young, and, yeah. you know, yeah. so maybe my, now I'm a little bit more um, diplomatic. I think it's very interesting what you say about the, the, the different mentality. I've never really, um, never had a problem really because I was always the only girl, and I've never really, people say, well, wasn't it difficult or isn't it difficult being on tour with, with only guys? And it's never been a big deal. I think if you don't make a big deal out of it, it doesn't turn into a big deal. No, if the the focus is on uh, was heißt die Leistung, so the the, um, the Leistung, the um, yeah, what you, how you play. So it, this must be on a really, be, really yeah, upper the, the level the, of the, the level. Playing. If yeah. this is the focus, this is your profession, and yeah. you must be professional and on the really high level, and then. If I played very good, if I were really strong, then I was always uh, also I could fight. But if if I had a bad ambition, I was you'd be quiet. Very, very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> because we had um, we had Tina Ting Helsit on yes. on Friday. She's watching at home. Hi, Tina. Uh, she's still in Berlin. She mm -hmm. spent the weekend at my place, okay. and she plays an ensemble of only girls. And we couldn't have ever even imagined that. Um, you know, there weren't enough. Can be also boring. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Tina's is boring. She told some great stories, but uh, yeah, yeah, uh, could be also. Yeah. Um, my friend uh, and colleague Georg Schreckenberger, who works with you at the at the Hans Eisler um, Music yes. uh, High School, he told me a, a story about how he turned on the TV one day and um, you went from um, the opera in Frankfurt to Bamberg. We'll get back to that to Bamberg and then to Hessische Rundfunk. Mm -hmm. Um, right, Frankfurt Radio Orchestra, and he said he turned on the TV and there was Frankfurt Radio Orchestra doing Mahler 5, and he said he was, he, he was your student, and he said he was so proud of you because there was this beautiful blonde woman at the front playing her heart out, and there were only men. For, she said, all you could see were all these men behind you, and he said he was so proud of you, and, and I, oh, I, I talked to him today cute. on the phone. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. It, it can't have been easy. Uh, at times. I didn't think about it. I loved the music so much, I was so excited to play those big, uh, the, those fantastic solos. And uh, and I had uh, the big chance that uh, Inbal was the conductor. He liked horn so much. Yeah. So he ne never wants us to play careful always. Great. And this is very helpful if you yeah. can play 
out yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you don't have to be shy. She certainly can. I have to tell you, we played The Ring uh, with Simon Rattle recently, and Mary Louisa came played first tuba and then first horn in the Valkyrie at the this front. This was fun. <laughs> that was really good fun, and she really, she can really hold her own against Stefan Dora, I must say. <laughs> no, 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 not that. But I, I never had the chance in my life to play uh, tuba. Yeah. And this was. Uh, she took fun. it very seriously. We had to yeah. do all sorts of rehearsals. <laughs> yeah, but it was good. I love it. It was sound. great. It yeah. was really good fun. So many questions for you. Um, I think we'll just stop in your uh, in your uh, okay. your choreo. Ugh, I can't speak English. We've been spe we should have started <laughs> speaking English an hour ago. We will stop in your um, in your CV and go on to just a few questions okay. before we get. Where, where do we stop? We stopped at Frankfurt, so we'll go back to Bamberg when we finish. Okay. They're good questions. Lewis asks, what do you look for picking a student to study with you? Do you prefer talent, intelligence, the will to study with you? Is there something you particularly look for? I would, we'll get to that later, yeah. but he's asked about this. So. Okay, of course, in every human relationship, you must have a, a certain sympathy mm -hmm. for, for a person. But um, as older as I am as teacher, I'm more and more flexible to be a good teacher for everybody. So this is my, my goal. Why so I it doesn't have to be someone you really like? You can no. Be, okay. No. In the beginning, yes. Yeah. But, but meanwhile, I, I try to, to, to see which person is behind. Of course, I, I prefer students where, where I can see a certain mental flexibility. Because this means if they are, have different interests and, and if they are lively in, in head, so they, they learn faster. Because this is the most important thing, how, how fast you are in your developed um, speed. Mm -hmm. Because somebody is very high, high in, in beginning, but then the, the development is like this. And yeah. the other one starts here, like me. I was 19. Yeah. I was here, and, and my development was quite fast. So. It's never, never too late. Yeah. But, uh, of yeah. course, and it must fit together. Yeah. So not every teacher is is good for every student. How many students do you have here in Berlin? Always around 50, 60, 70, 80. So because they, they if they, 15. I do fifteen. Yes, 15, not fifteen. Fifteen. <laughs> no, <I was> gonna <laughs> say. no, because if I'm I'm a good teacher, then they are very fast in in orchestras. They have okay. the chance to play, and then. Okay. They um, are only half the time here. And okay. So. Okay. Yeah. I, I I shouldn't have skipped to that because I want to get to your students, but that's just that's really it's a really important question. Richard Prankard, who is um just uh, is drinking beer in Melbourne, you wrote, was it beer or was it tea, Richard? Who was the conductor you found best to work with? That's a difficult question. You've worked with so many. Um, as um, in orchestra. Yeah. Or in, as yeah. Solid? Both. Because this is yeah, different. Yeah, totally different. <laughs> as a solist, you want a conductor not to disturb you too much. Exactly. But, but as um, so, I yeah, I didn't. Of course, I I played in radio symphony yeah. orchestra. You went Frankfurt. from from Frank. You went to to Bamberg for two. How, how many Bamberg years? there, I I, I um, played with Eugen Jochum. So this was uh, Jochum was uh, <laughs> the Bruckner. Yeah, the Bruckner specialist. Yeah. Specialist. And um, I, I was not so long in orchestra, only yeah, 10 years. Yeah. So, of course, I had in the chance to, to yeah. work with uh, Simon Rettel, which I personally like very much because he has such a, a human um, standing towards the, the, the musicians. Our principal this, said that he loves playing um, Andreas Blau. He said the great thing about Simon is you don't have to be afraid when he gives yeah. a downbeat. This <laughs> is really, uh, really. Very, very. It's very important. So very many important. conductors, you know, you just think they give the downbeat and they're already doing this before you yeah. you've even play the note. It's it's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so in Bal, you like very much and Simon. No, no, in Bal, I I just worked he with worked. him. I I wouldn't say that is um, I think uh, level of of so Simon is. Hi. So. And for accompanying you as a soloist, there's the wonderful video we have here. You were being conducted by Sebastian Weigler. Yeah. <laughs> Was also very nice. Yeah, it's a, a lot of uh, very good, good yeah. ones. Uh, very uh, Horst Stein was very. Uh, he was opera. Opera uh, conductors are very flexible, so it's. Very I remember easy. you working with Horst Stein here at the Staatsoper when I used to play at the oh, yeah. Unter den Linden. Yeah. And poor Marie Louisa, she, you're playing Mozart too. Yeah. But what you didn't know is that there was Alpine Symphony in the second half. Oh yes. So do you remember? In, yeah. in all the rehearsals, you had all the offstage horns sitting there like this, <laughs> listening to you. Yeah. 
But we had a ni very nice, nice uh, party. Uh, party after. Yes, it was very nice party. Great. I remember picking you up in my little mini, <laughs> and you were eating a cheese sandwich in the car, and you just had like five cups of coffee. And I thought, how on earth can you play after five <laughs> cups of coffee? Yeah, I was young. I needed the. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still drink coffee before no. you play? No. 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 But you still eat a cheese sandwich. Yes. I know all cheese sandwiches all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, something very sweet that one of your students told me is that whenever she goes to an audition, um, it was Amanda, Amanda Kleinbach, she says whenever she goes to an audition, you can tell who are the Neunecker students because they'll all be eating a cheese sandwich oh, yeah. before the audition. <laughs> so, I <laughs> that's your tip. <laughs> that's my tip. Because it's very good for the cheese, it's good for the nerves. It makes the magen nerven, the, of the, the nerves of the stomach, more calm. Really? Yeah, try. So cheese sandwich before when yes. we're nervous, because somebody just, uh, just asked that. They want without, to know about being nervous. Without uh, the museum, or so no. No vegetables. No, just plain bread, bread and butter? cheese. No, a little bit Little butter, butter and yeah. cheese. Because, um, uh, because Birdhorn has asked, what do you do when you get nervous? Now we know. You eat yeah. a cheese sandwich. Yeah, I need it for for the. If I don't eat one hour before something, That's I'm I'm good. I get nervous. And bananas? I don't like so much. It makes no. so no. klebrig, <laughs> sticky in your mouth. <laughs> mm. um, what's your best tip for a nervous player who only started the horn at age forty-seven? That's Miriam. Glad you started the horn, Miriam, at forty-seven. I think that's great. But against nervosity? Yeah. Um, cheese sandwich. Yes. <laughs> And uh, out again is training? Uh, uh, yeah, me mental. Out Men again, out yeah, out again to lie down and, and relax. And you can also, if you are trained, you can do it on the shot before on the, on the toilet. On the toilet? And, uh, yeah, okay. just to, to relax. And mental train in, in, in general. Yeah. That's very important, isn't it? It's, yeah. It's part and of sport, our of course. Sport, a little bit. A little bit is good. What, what do you do? <laughs> Not much, <laughs> but ten minutes every day. Ten minutes every day on the cross cross train. Cross train. More than I get to do. But before TV. Oh, yeah. so okay. Ten min ten minutes in the morning TV. Breakfast good. TV or yeah, or, like or films <laughs> or yeah. I think a little bit is better than nothing. Absolutely. I'm. I, you have inspired me. I, <laughs> I I tend to do either a lot or then nothing. No, a little but, bit is better. Yeah. Ten minutes is okay. Okay. Um, Daniel Wich just wants to know something about your Bach mouthpiece. Yes. He wants to say, is it an old Bach number three? Yes, because the or new ones one. are very tiny, a little bit smaller. The, the old ones are... He was told to play a mouthpiece with a big big rim and would like to know what you think about that. Big rims. No. Depends on the lips, huh? Yeah. So this is has already a, a big big rim. It it really it's so so individual. You can't yeah. do, you can't yeah. say in general. You have certain rules because a, a, a round rim makes the the sound more round and the attack more difficult. But if uh, if you have very thick lips and the attack is not so exact, then you have to take smaller rims with inside a little bit more sharp. Okay, and then it, it makes it. Did you clear. ever want to design your own mouthpiece like uh, no. like Fergus did? No. no, no. I I think it's too individual. It uh, it would fit for me, but not for for all others. Yeah. So some people they, I I get so crazy. I find students get very crazy with mouthpieces, and they come with this whole big selection. Mm. And I don't know. I just think if it sounds good and it works, then keep it. No, I <laughs> I look what what everybody needs, yeah. and then I I look in my big case and I select. <laughs> ah, good. Now we try, of course. You have to yeah. try and then to, to oh, see. Oh, Miriam says she doesn't eat cheese. Would chocolate work? <laughs> <laughs> Our chocolate is, is dangerous. It makes it makes it too too easy going. Yeah. So if if you am then the you mean two kicks the kicks yeah. is uh, kicks the yeah, pithier the the crock the <laughs> the split note. For me, this wouldn't wouldn't be wouldn't good. Work. Also, but, chocolate is dangerous because it gives you high blood sugar. Raise very quickly, and then yeah. halfway through the Bruckner Symphony, it goes bang. But the, also, this is you have to try, just to try what um, the worst is for me: hot soup before. Oh, the fat yeah. of the hot hot soup or something. Well, salty is not good either. Yeah, very. But everybody has to to make That's your true. own experience. We just give the tips. But we know. cheese <laughs> cheese bread is in oh. any case. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. So we'll take a few more questions uh, in in a bit. Um, and uh, I want to. You went from Bamberg to 
uh, Radio Symphony Orchestra. Uh, but Frankfurt. that was only 10 years in total. But you still spent a long time. You had quite a girly horn section, didn't you, in Frankfurt? Yeah, three. Gerda and Gerda Sperling. Ursula. And Ursula Kepser and, and yourself. Mm. And um, tell me why you decided to leave. Because I had the, the teaching job in uh, on, the, on the school, and the, this, those teaching jobs are very highly... The professor yeah. professorship at the yeah at the high highly paid and yeah. highly it's a very secure yeah. position. But I or I decided to be in orchestra and teaching. But then I I, I got pregnant and then I had to to so decide. So you couldn't be pregnant and play in the orchestra and teach okay. and concerts <laughs> and, and concert, jam music yeah. and no this was too yeah. much. So I decided to leave the orchestra, but I couldn't couldn't listen a big. Symphony uh, oh. for years, oh. so it, it it was really hard. But then after three, four, five years, I could listen to Tchaikovsky yeah. <laughs> Symphony oh. again. Now this was really because I like to play in, in um, with other people to to be. To it's a lonelier life as a soloist, isn't it? Lonelier, yeah, yeah. How it, many it, solo concerts would you then do in a year, or solo and chamber? So concerts? when in this this time, yeah. It was quite a lot, 70, 80 in, in the year, and, and teaching, and chamber music, and yeah. children, and so it was was tough. But now life is a little bit more calm. More and, peace. How old are your yeah. children now? 20 and 20. Oh, so, they, so they're, they, they don't need mama that much, do they? No, sometimes, but yeah. no. It's, yeah. Now it's very, very much fun to have them. Setting up your class in um, in in Frankfurt, uh, you you really did for me uh, who came to it came to Germany then quite late. You were like the teacher. Everyone it was like Mecca. If I went, to, if people went to study with you, then they'd get a job. And that's what many of your students say is the best thing about you is that you can turn moderate talent into into somebody who really is a totally secure and 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 a horn player who has something to say. They say you find their inner voice. Um, like we talked about, they say you're very good at doing that, and that 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 you just you just turn out these really well schooled horn players. Yes, this is very nice to hear. Of course, yeah. <laughs> I'm very honored. But um, yeah, I I try to 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 develop this and um, to so that you discover the the person, the the strong sides, and the of course you discover sometimes weak <laughs> weak sides as well, and. Um, yeah, I, I think it worked well, but I, I never stop uh, learning, learning how how to teach better. So for me, something my profession, even if I play horn and or teaching, it's only interesting if I can develop myself. If if I learn more and more how to be a better teacher, so and a better player. Don't you find that when you sit there in master classes and tell people all these things? And then I well I do anyway. And then I go home and I think, oh, I said that. I'd better I'd better practice it now. <laughs> yeah, more or less. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's it's quite. I find teaching makes uh, make makes me makes me play worse in a way because the the more you talk, the worse the worse playing. Um, yeah, you have to make uh, yeah. abstraction. It doesn't so, make it doesn't make you a worse player, but it means you're immediate playing. You know, picking up the horn, playing when. It's no, this is nearly impossible. Do you to, to speak a lot and and then to play and I need always some uh, some minutes to get in and I think I lose so much time when I, I I show things and mostly they don't want to hear what what I do really you think no so? I think I, I learned enough to to explain to explain you and your to teachers sing. Would, your your students would like to hear you play something rather than talk about it yeah but but if I I need time to to play on this level what I want. From them, if if I can't warm up and mm. uh, the speaking and and mm. playing is it makes your lips dry. Yeah. So I I really don't like so much playing while I teach. We had a nice masterclass recently in a bistro in Paris. Oh yes, I saw some great pictures of that at Lolly <laughs> Yeah, it was very dry. <laughs> it is, isn't it? I've for been the there. students, but it was a nice nice atmosphere. It's a nice place, and mm. a different place to do a masterclass. How many outside masterclasses do you, do you do a year? Yeah, also not so much because yeah, I I like master classes on one side and other side I prefer to I prefer really to to work with somebody two three years and yeah. to develop things. It master class can only be a little idea how how to make it better or but to do it and to change things this is really mm. something you must must keep on. Uh, 
very and and to give help for somebody to change really elementary things. This needs every week, and uh, and this is more interesting for me. Do you manage to be there every week? A lot of the big yeah. names don't manage to to be around. Yes. You really give your students yes. a I, lot I, of time. I'm, yeah, maybe one week not in exam, but I'm really very. I always try to be there and to fly morning and then teach the, the day. Sometimes not so long, but I think uh, in in homeopathic doses yeah. it's it's much yeah. more valuable. Yeah. Yes. I, Someone's just asked asked me uh, asked you a question. Alec has asked, "What was the recording you had the most fun in doing?" And uh, I have a feeling I know which one it is because it's uh, we have a picture here. If that's the one I'm thinking, it's of. one of I I liked all. I do. It's always a big experience to make a recording and uh, your glia is amazing. I mean, there's really. What What are your favorite ones? I can't. You couldn't say. No. I uh, in a certain way I love. And having the most fun in, in the most fun, any fun, yeah. Fun. Or don't we have fun when? We yes. <laughs> yeah, you have fun if it it was good. Yeah. <laughs> but while doing it, you're so concentrated. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, of course, I I'm very uh, honored that Ligeti wrote this yeah. Hon Concerti, Hon Con Hon Concerti for me. Uh, I think a lot of a um, lot of students never heard it, but it's worth because it's really a new. A new development of, of the horn. It's really difficult. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's got four natural horns in the orchestra. Yes. I've heard our friend Tommy Bernstein, he's, he's made a lot of complaints when he was trying to learn this part. He says it's really difficult. Yeah, but, but it gets more and more, and more yeah. easy, and it's uh, another sound. It's yeah. another Musiksprache, uh, another speaking. Um, and Ligeti, did he consult you while he while yeah. he wrote this? He I, I know him, knew him years before, and we were on on tour um, while playing the our uh, cameraman are throwing things around in the room here. The trio yeah. for, for violin, horn, and piano, and we had a lot of concerts where he was also um, yeah. explaining yeah. Uh, his music. And then I, I spoke with him. Oh, Georgie, you must write something uh, really for horn. He's a great character. And he said, Oh no, what I know about horn, I, this I wrote in this trio. And I said, Yes, but this is the beginning of a new way. You have to to make it yeah. more you intense. Made, you persuaded him to do that. I, yeah. Stefan, can you look at this? This is this is a book. Um, what is this? This is a book about him. A book, a book yeah. about Ligeti. And this is such a beautiful picture. Kissing your hand. <laughs> is it after a performance? After the uh, well, if you want. after the first performance of the concerto. You got that. Looks like that. Okay, got it. We're very spontaneous here in the Horn Hangout. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, he was very charming. He was a very charming man, wasn't he? Yeah, but also dangerous in his opinions. He was such an intelligent and. Uh, Great person. Um, I also have the booklet here. I don't know if if, if you can. For my Louise Neunecke, wunderbar, vielen Dank, Enthusiasmus, Bewunderung, um, Ligeti. Can you see that? That's a little bit more difficult. What's this little picture that he's written, that he's drawn here? This, uh, yeah, it's the the overtones. One, two, three, four, ah. five. Because he, the whole concerto is um, written for natural horn, yeah. but he just decided to. To take the the full horn and you change always only the length of the. Okay. Well, that's amazing. No, he really was a great thing. So that that's a really a big gift you've given the horn world. Yes. Uh, yes. It's uh, it's not a that solistic piece. It's yeah. it's an ensemble piece. Yeah. But there, are, if you really try to to get in this music, it's it, it you discover really new worlds. It's, mm, it's poor four I, horns in the orchestra. They have to really practice. <laughs> to get yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, but he wanted to, to to construct a new harmonic with uh, combining the different uh, natural horns, and it it's there are really great great sounds coming out. Everybody, go and buy the CD. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's I fantastic. think in the internet you can. In the internet, I'm sure. I'm sure you find anything in the internet. No, just not a lot of information about you. <laughs> um, uh, okay, should we go back to a few questions? There's some nice questions going on, right? Yes. Are we ready for this? Yes. Um, Ellie Mubs is looking. She says, hello, ah, Ellie. <laughs> hello, Ellie. <laughs> um, and it's really nice to see uh, to see who's watching. Campbell is watching. 
Um, it's, he's written, it's unbelievable the dedication that Frau Neunecker has for her class, and I've only been there a few weeks. Yes. That's <laughs> nice. That's nice. Um, Oshorn, I, re I think that's probably someone in Australia, what kind of technical exercises do you feel are very important? That's a difficult question. I would maybe re rephrase that as, what do you do to keep in shape, especially when you're teaching so much? Because it's so hard to keep in shape when you're teaching. Yeah. So I think... You have big elementary um, themes. You have, you have to train every day one exercise of one of the big uh, uh, things. So this is flexibility. Mm -hmm. Every day one one exercise of flexibility. Not not five hours flexibility, but <laughs> only one. Yeah. Then then one stability. Then one stability. Stability. Yeah. Then uh, so just keeping so, that the nodes are not swimming wobbly. <laughs> And then uh, one legato, mm -hmm. and one for high register, one for low register, and one, one for Strength. endurance for yeah. power. Sure. And then you have some some special uh, things like lip drill or muting uh, mm -hmm. with a hand in the actually, low. Actually, someone's just writing a question I've never actually come across before in a horn hangout. Becky wants to know what are the most important mutes to have. Now, <laughs> mouthpieces mutes. Uh, you mute. need yeah mute. I guess we uh, use uh, well a whole different range. No, of I, I still use the Engelmann. Engelmann, this is a uh, wooden. The sound is not not, not so, so hard. Bright. Yeah. It's a little bit. Uh, soft. With us, that's quite difficult because it's a little bit too soft to reach the back of the yes. ceremony. Yes, in in orchestra, yeah. it's diff you have to use different yeah. mutes. So. Do you use a stopping mute or do you prefer to use the hand? Good. Good girl. I don't understand this sort of reaching for the stopping mute for every note. Uh, yeah, but. For real low register, it's sometimes you have sure. have to, have, but you still practice it. With yeah, that. of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> what was your most satisfying teaching experience? Can you even answer that? Uh, yes. Who asked that? Uh, Miriam. Oh, Miriam's coming up with good questions today. Yeah, of course. If you teach somebody three or four years, and and the person is is coming from there to there and mm -hmm. got a job, yeah. then it's a very good feeling. Is it true that with you, in German there this, there's this two, um, the Z and the Du, the polite form yes. of you and the, the, the personal form of Du. We're, we're lucky because <laughs> we're already on the personal form of you. Is it true that you ha that a student has to Z, has to say Z to you until they get a job? Yeah, but I also do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You so, do as well. Yeah, yeah this I, yeah. I did from beginning, and I never change, and I nice will thing. never change. <laughs> and then, then when they have the job, um, then they then go up, and then we have a drink, and then. But Georg, Georg said that he he's so <laughs> in awe and so respectful of you that even many years later he still gets the do. Sometimes <laughs> he still has to work on that. Yeah, it's maybe in France you have it. Yeah, still, yeah. And yeah. In Ooh, too. Yeah, yeah. and. So in English we all it's say, a part of our culture yeah, and uh, yeah. I don't want just to so your student ignore. Has, to, has to get a job and then they can say do. yeah okay so that must be a very satisfying teaching thing um Kathy in Michigan wants to know what's the title of the CD um isn't it just called Ligeti oh we have it no we have it. oh here I've got it here um George Georgi Ligeti yeah, it's Hamburgisches, uh, the title of the concert is Hamburgisches, Hamburgisches Concerto. Yeah, Hamburgisches, the Ham Hamburger Concerto, <laughs> Hamburgisches Concerto. Yeah. Um, and the, yeah, it's just, it's got the Hamburg, the double concerto, the ramifications, and the requiem. So, yeah, that's all. There you go, you know that. Um, and Felix would like to know the three main properties of the perfect embouchure. Gip, is there even a perfect embouchure? There is an embouchure which works with um, maybe 80% of all horn players. The majority plays with this. <laughs> now look at that shin. Can you do that once more? Can you do that you know, once more? You know, the important yeah. thing is the stability yeah. you get from here. Yeah. The flexibility, you, the, the produce of the note is, is here. Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. is like uh, the clavier of the piano. Yeah. You, you give the... I hope you guys are really, that, that, is, that is the perfect embouchure so for me. So in the low yeah. register yeah. you have, this is always yeah. tense because this gives the position. And, and it's not allowed to wobble. No. no. <laughs> this is the position and, and here you get the tension for the note. So this means as higher you come, yeah. all tension and lower note. Mm -hmm. But here the corners are always staying quite secure. So. 
it's very easy. My cameramen are looking very <laughs> impressed at that. But you know, you know, Ambusher is, from my opinion, fifty percent. Okay, fifty percent Ambusher, fifty percent support. Support really, really and the support work is, and from you, here and be you, relaxed. I was just about to say this. You you did that. Actually, if you say support, you think it was coming from here, but here, here's supporting, here's relaxing. Yeah, but you support to relax. The support means you have something to support, and this this is what you have to support. Like the singer, the singer must be uh, free here. And I think it's fifty percent, fifty percent. Many people think it's hundred percent here, yeah. but it's no. Not quite. How how can you keep someone free, let someone free? Because I hear so often da 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 da, and you you really see the tension in here. Yeah, the, you know it's hard work, but we it needs someone. How do to they get, to get free? Get, how do you free them up? First, to get a feeling of the tension itself, mm -hmm. to, to have the feeling, oh, yes, this yeah. might be <laughs> tense, then to get relaxed, yeah. and yeah. then to go in the activity here. Yeah. But first, first relaxation, mm -hmm. then activity, mm -hmm. while keeping the relaxation. Mm. It's a subject for a whole nother. I think we're going yeah. to come with our hangout team in, into the into the, uh, the music school That's and... Uh, <laughs> and see what we can, um, yeah. Um, Roger, who's a, also a big friend of the Hangouts, hi Roger. What would advice would you give to those 20% like me who can't play using the flex chin in all registers? So obviously the chin goes a little bit walking. Um, yeah. How old are you? Oh, I don't know. How old are you, Roger? I think he's probably about you know 20, 20, early 20s, right? Yeah, early 20s. Early 20s. Yeah. If you are not already professional and playing in orchestra, you can you can change. I'm yeah. I'm very careful in changing things if somebody is already professional yeah. and have has to play, then I I, I don't touch. Yeah. But if you're somebody is under twenty, uh, of course it's worth um, to change. And uh, the w important is to strengthen the little muscles who give the direction mm -hmm. to this. This the way, inner yeah. inner ones who go in the middle. Those are have to be strengthened because the others, they are very strong of yeah. course of laughing and the yeah, yeah. and just to have the right balance yeah. because power you always get from two muscles who go outside and inside and they two together it makes makes the the, the power. So no smiling and you you can use a mirror of course and just w try to be, produce notes going inside and see those everybody has has uh, the the muscles here but it all looks, around the world there's horn players going <laughs> 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 it looks different if you do a little yeah <laughs> then you will find them and then try to play you have the while ultimate looking. chin you have the <laughs> ultimate chin no. of all horn players 80 percent 80 percent of good players have yeah. it they do just the same but for a, for a 20 percent that uh, it can if somebody is really has a lot of muscles and yeah. can press enough, yeah. <laughs> then I my my opinion is press as much as you can, mm. but but not press this way. Yeah, I, also also okay. Though uh, the pressure you need to to need otherwise to. it's too yeah. windy and too thin. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, not more than eighty or nine hundred. 800 or 900 gram degree. Yeah. I have a certain and an masquerade. Yeah, we something can, to measure how much. Yeah, how how you can oh. you can see how much you press, but not not more. But I think uh, one kilo always it's enough. Not not more. One kilo pressing against yeah, everybody your lips. is doing this. Oh, okay. But who those people who press too much do more, and then the lip, of course, it's like like hurting. What what is this 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 thing? Um, no, it's just it's very easy. It's just the feather. And it just goes boop, a little bit inside. If uh, it's not this burp thing, no, no, no. no. Oh, okay. I, but, I but don't know about such thing. I'm going to come and try. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very easy. It's just a control. And okay. if if somebody is too early in, then it means is he has used more than one kilo uh, pressure. And then it's it's worth just to relax the arm and just to to go a little bit, but not without okay. pressure. This is would be a, a trumpet position. <laughs> this is too much outside. We need a certain pressure to be in the middle. We need the middle for good sound. We need the lip relaxed. Yeah. If yeah. you go yeah. like this, it's 
trumpet sound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that really well, though. I can see your early yeah, trumpets. But I don't trumpet like trumpets trumpet so much. No, the horn is better. <laughs> we prefer the horn. Of course, the horn is better. Um, oh, Roger's 24, so I was just about right. Um, uh, Amanda, I wonder if that's our Amanda, how do you get motivated to practice when you don't feel like it? Well, I'd like to know that too. <laughs> Discipline. Discipline. It really, there's nothing I'm we can sorry, do about but, it. I'm sorry, but yeah. uh, if, you, if you want to be a horn player, you must really decide, do I like to practice? But if, 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 you, are, if you don't like to practice, really to discover things, new things, then it's a hard profession because uh, only talent is not enough. You have always like a sportsman to train the muscles, the muscle coordination. Yeah. I often don't like to practice, but I have to. There's no way around. If it's very, then sometimes you can take the mute. Yeah. Um, mute dämpfer. Yeah, the mute. Yeah, the very the 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 calm the, the, zimmer dämpfer. There we have the yeah the practice the silent silent silent, yeah, silent breath. And then watch a very nice. Uh, film. <laughs> You're not supposed to say that to students. Yeah, sometimes, you sometimes just keeping helps. notes with a yeah. good support, yeah. and, and then uh, you have two hours of uh, good practice. Okay, well, I'm going to be doing that tonight. But you, you can't develop your sound That's and true. all this. So for students, I don't recommend no. it. But if you, if Sometimes if you have to practice and you don't feel yeah. like it, then that's in a hotel, sometimes that's the only way. Or in, in the car, when I drive car. <laughs> Stefan Jutzki does that too. He has a little horn. He plays it in the car in the, in, in traffic jams. <laughs> he likes that. There are so many questions. I don't think we're, it's really incredible. You're going to be um, be getting these afterwards, so you can see all the all the all the things. My friend, I just want to ask you a question from Tokyo because my friend Midori is watching in Tokyo. Hi, Midori. Kumbawa. Um, she says hello to us both. And when she practices horn by herself, her lip gets tired very quickly. And how many hours do you practice a day? And why? And how can she practice more at a time? That's a, that's a good, a typical student question. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, probably but maybe it's too hard. Yeah, maybe you you press a little bit too much, yeah. and then you get too too early. Uh, yeah. So try to do, relax your left arm yeah. and and try to. To keep notes and not, and try to be also more relaxed here. And normally, then you can play a very yeah. long, long time. Okay, really short answers to these ones because this is we could go on for like two hours here, but uh, I have to go and practice. So, do you, what do you have to do after this? You've got to go and teach after the hangout today? Yeah. No, you're free today. Free day. You uh, came in just for the hangout. Yeah. Thank you. Let's go and have some coffee afterwards. Um, John Putnam says, uh, George, Georgie, did you, Georgie? Georgie. Georgie. Ligeti. Ligeti Rebe recommends a triple horn on the front page of the Hamburg Concerto. Did no. you use a triple horn? No. He no. didn't recommend a triple horn. He re recommends a triple horn on the front page of the music, apparently. Well, that's what but maybe this was written later, but not yeah, maybe, maybe someone else. No, not not when you not when you played it. No triple, not because you on the high F you can't produce the those overtone series. No, this is not high not F, at well, all that high. Yeah. No, 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 no triple horn. Okay. Double. Um, Alexander Maurer wants to know what's your thoughts on setting on or setting in. Setting in produces a nice round sound. It's very good for for slurs, but very very few. Uh, persons can can have in enough endurance yeah. with this ambush. Of course, there are a lot of good, famous horn players who, yeah. are most low horn players, yeah. this can be okay. But if you try try to play high horn with a lot of endurance, then I I think it's easier yeah. easier on. Yeah, uh, it depends a little bit what you, um, what when you have a lot of thick muscles and a head like this yeah. and. <laughs> then you can you can use more pressure. Mm. So my I say use as pressure as much as you can. But if it's um, too much, this flex chin is causing a lot of uh, people are really talking about this flex chin. Chelsea said she's only just re figured out how to use it in the low range. Yeah. Now, and then she says, now what do I do to get used to it? Practice in the low range. That's the only thing you can do. Yeah. The secret is the, those two little muscles. Mm -hmm. They go in. Okay. And they allow you to bring the, the, this lip in for the low register. Okay. So in low register, you need really lip mass. And if you pull it, then it's tensed. When you go out, you have to go in, 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 Point and in, also in the and down. yeah, and the yeah flexibility of the side. Yeah. If you are tensed in the lower register, it's not possible to to open. But if you're 
relaxed in the side, then you can really open and you have the lip who can smell. Okay. Great. Fantastic. This is the reason I have a good low register. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, but this is also so important. Where I go all, all over the world to the masterclass and people have terrible problems with the low range because yeah. you know, they aren't made to practice it. But this is really... The best uh, high horn players have a good low, low it's register. It's only a, a thing of position. Yeah. Low, yeah. low register is relaxing the side. And, and chin down. Yeah. yeah, and open. Yeah, and open down. Yeah. And Felix writes, why, what can be the reason if the flex chin does not work for two or three notes? Um, for him, it's example, the low C to D sharp, down to the C, but after that, mm -hmm. it's, it's fine. That's just the break. Yes, it? but the, I think it's, it's because of the hanging up of the uh, chin. The chin. Yeah. The, the chin. It's not a very uh, yeah. organic. You have to try to make an organic opening. <laughs> <laughs> I just love it. Every, all the horn players are, are just listening. And my wonderful camera I know it's team ugly, here, they're like, I... <laughs> what's she talking about? You're going to have a test after this, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's ugly, but... Uh, no, it's, it's uh, fantastic. I it wish, works. It's it really... Works. It's, uh, no, but the, it. this, the break is mostly that the contact of the mouth is here, you lose the contact. Yeah. And you to have the contact, you must activi make activity yeah. of the little yeah. muscles going. They can only go inside. inside. Yeah. And this combined with the pressure, the contact, then you can try to yeah. to yeah. go over this, this, um, this break. Yeah. 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 yeah, but it's possible, I know. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, that's enough of the flex chin, you guys. I think we're going to do a flex chin horn hangout at some point, and only talk about that. It's really I'm totally fascinated by this. I'm I'm the sort of I sort of tend to not think about it too much because I'm lucky because it, it does it anyway. So when people ask me these questions, I can't answer them nearly as well. But you do. You you are in the middle. Yeah. So it's just. But, yeah. but no. But that's I was just lucky because I just I yeah. Just but did it. Um, yeah. Click up. It's <laughs> it's not so hard to yeah, to, to learn. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. It's only the Okay. Point. Everyone watching who plays the horn, and even you, like Tina, who don't, you're going to go away and practice your getting your chin down and. Um, but you know, in. if you try to to put it down, don't tense also the upper lip. Yeah. It's not that you tense all and nothing. Yeah. It's just the independence of tense the upper lip in the high and then to relax the upper lip. Yeah. But be all the time with the yeah. here. In position. Yeah. This is the difficulty to, to use it separately. Okay. okay, two more questions. Evika, what piece have you performed most often? Oops, yeah, fourth Mozart, first yeah. Strauss. Fourth Mozart, <laughs> yeah, Mozart. then second Strauss very often, yeah. of course, second Mozart. Such a hero. Some. And a question to finish off, well, question to finish off the, the, the questions, um, the, 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 the live questions, I still have a couple of my own. Raphael wants to know, which is very good because we're being sponsored today by Alexander Horns. Mm -hmm. Why do you play Alexander Horns and um, what do you find in them that other horns don't have? I can see Philip, Alexander and Mainz going, <laughs> uh, I'm, I was born 30 kilometers from Mainz yes. away. Of course, I speak the dialect of <laughs> <laughs> this region, yeah. and um, now it's it's. I think it's a very centered sound, very centered, and um, has a, a little bit more resistance than other horns. But this makes the sound more. It, it goes Projects. more because in yeah. physics the energy never is going away. So mm -hmm. somewhere the energy is in in the, in the room. Mm -hmm. Then. Um, yeah, and I think uh, Alexander is, they are so nice people. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're good. And team. very, very generous and um, also, yeah, yeah. And I think uh, fantastic. We're proud ones. to be Alexander players. Yeah, but I we think, are. I think of course, there are other instruments, wonderful instruments, yeah. I, I have yeah. to say. Yeah, of course. Uh, of um, course. But I, it's a thing of, of uh, what, what you want to hear. Yeah. Thank you for all these live questions. I have a couple of really mini ones to finish off. Is what do you do when you don't, when you're not playing, and when you're not teaching? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm. I grew up, grew up in uh, in lands uh, on the in landscape in, in a the little country. village. Yeah. yeah, in the country. So I really love to to do very simple things like painting, uh, 
uh, windows oh. or cutting wood and such things. And this I do in Sweden. You have a house in Sweden. Yeah. yeah. And I, I love very Everyone much. Everyone who's visited you there has just been so impressed. At you, you bake cakes. Apparently your raspberry jam is, oh, yes. is phenomenal. <laughs> phenomenal. I want to try it. And um, and one friend of ours, um, Tommy, described you as eine Frau der Tat. A woman who gets <laughs> things done. He okay. said because you can fix anything and you can bake and you, you can just do all this stuff. Yeah, but you know, you need always in your life, you need the... I don't like to do always the same. Mm -hmm. I, I, I need just the, the difference. Yeah. I love Berlin with the exhibitions and the modern art and, and culture. I love it. Yeah. But then sometimes I want to be just in the forest and yeah. picking up some... <laughs> just to, to, to keep the brain fresh. Yeah. And, and just this, I, I like the, the difference. Yeah. Otherwise it would be boring. And tell us about your Hornmühle. Because next yes. week you're doing, it's a very special thing for you. Um, Hornmühle, Mühle is the word, a mill, a sort of horn Yeah, it, the first first meeting was in such a kind of, of uh, In house. an old mill. Yeah. Uh, but if you, you can also in, in, in German language, if durch eine Mühle drehen, this, that you means that you work so hard that it comes comes out uh, yeah. then really uh, separate. Yeah. So it's um, double meaning. And it's, um, I do it since nearly 20 years now, uh, every year, every year. Uh, a meeting of my students and former students, it's a big family and former students bring uh, own um, Vorträge, own, 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 own ideas and, ideas own, and, yeah. and we work yeah. or I invite other teachers. And you also invite not only horn players but no. actors, yes. salsa teachers. Yes, <laughs> we did salsa, it was great. And uh, as well, this, this time I have uh, somebody who's making, um, he's doing hypnosis. Hypno hypnosis, yeah. Hypnosis against uh, nervosity. Fantastic. Yeah. So this I, I forgot to mention. Right. So this uh, I am looking forward. But the, of course, this is not something for uh, with all. It's yeah. just uh, only Very one intimate. one uh, person. And. Um, yeah, different different other things, always. Your students are very, very lucky to have you. And we are very lucky to have you here at the Horn Hangout. I brought you a little something from Japan. Wow. What's that? <laughs> it's horn chocolate. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I just thought oh, so. Yeah, no yes. idea if it's yummy, but I like the name of it. So you can take it to your right. horn mula and oh, uh, see if thank it's you right. Very much. Thank you so so much for joining us. We yes. are all so grateful. Um, and yeah. thank you for for looking and uh, listening. And um, so horn is the best choice. <laughs> what more can I say? Thank you very much for joining us. And we will see you for the next one. Hang out. Keep a lookout on the website, and we'll let you know who's coming up next. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>